hyperconvection proto and auto lace, as well as the hyperconvection circuit imprinter, are direct upgrades to their normal counterparts. They do come with the downside of producing some heat when you're making items out of them, but in this video I will explain how to mitigate this heat problem and almost completely eliminate it. There is also the industrial ore processor, which functions pretty similarly to the hyperconvections, but this doesn't produce heat, uh, but it also isn't quite as good at saving material cost. Anyways, to make hyperconvection machines, it's really simple. It is a tier 1 industrial engineering research, so you can get it very first tech in the game, and I would highly, highly recommend all scientists focus on this first, because these machines make your life as a scientist so much easier, because that means you need 50% less materials per thing you make, and cargo is not always able to get these materials due to the fact that salvage does not really encourage mining all that much. Relying on salvage to have to mine additional gold and silver is unreliable at best. Salvage is not really encouraged to mine all the cool gamer loots out there that does not involve mining. Like, if you're going to ask a salvage player, would you rather get 20 TC worth of items or get some gold for an apartment they're never going to interact with? They're going to go for the 20 TC pretty much every time. So science needs to try to be as self-reliant on materials as possible or reliant on cargo having money to get things like steel and glass, you name it. Anyway, so the industrial ore processor is its own uh, tech, but it is still under the industrial tech. It's under, it's under salvage equipment. So they're in the same tier, in the same branch. So there's a chance you'll get this first. Uh, I would also highly recommend making this for salvage if they do mine. This means they have to mine less, which means it'll also help your department out as well. The so nice thing about the industrial ore processor is that it uses the same exact materials. So you can literally just run the board over and you just screwdriver and crowbar the processor and you just pop in the new uh, machine board. And since this is just a flat upgrade, there's nothing else you have to do. It's just straight up better. So for example, a full stack of glass only takes four and a half quarts in an industrial ore processor, but on a normal one, it takes six uh, chunks of quartz. So you save 25% of ore first material cost. Hyperconvection's actually twice as good. So for example, an air tank only costs 1.5 steel at a hyperconvection, but at a normal auto lathe, it's three steel. So you save 50% of your materials per craft. This is monumental. However, Due to the fact that you have to make these machine boards, I would highly recommend you make the hyperconvection circuit imprinter first. And it's all in the same tr uh, tech tree, so if you're going to make these, you should make the imprinter first because this saves you the most materials. So, you basically will go to your circuit imprinter, you'll type in the hyperconvection circuit imprinter, and you'll print this. You need 9 glass, 1 gold, 1 steel. You'll have all this available around start, so you don't even need to ask cargo in order to get your upgraded machines. So boards also got cheaper in general. For some reason, the hyperconvection one has the old prices. So new boards now only cost 1 steel, 5 glass, 1 gold. But if I were to go to the hyperconvection lathe, or if I were to go to the hyperconvection circuit imprinter, and I want to make more hyperconvection machines... Look at that. It'd only be half a steel, two and a half glass, half a gold. It is super cheap if you make a hyperconvection circuit imprinter first. Of course, you could always just replace your old circuit imprinter. I would probably recommend doing this. Uh, you just have to pay attention to the differences between the boards. So a normal circuit imprinter is one matter bin, one manipulator, two glass beakers. The upgraded one is two matter bins, two glass beakers, one igniter. But it's really easy to make these things. And obviously you could just make the extra matter bins right off the bat. You only need to make one additional matter bin. So upgrading this is literally the cost of the board plus a tiny bit of glass and going to get an igniter. Okay, so once you make a hyperconvection item, we now have the problem of dealing with heat. So I have a gas analyzer and the room temp, of course, on a station is 20 Celsius. Even in a giant room like this, making something just like an air tank will have a noticeable increase of temperature very rapidly. And for every second that the hyperconvection lace or imprinters work, it will keep pumping out heat. And this can become rather dangerous really quickly in a small room. In a large room like this, you don't have to worry too much. There is natural ventilation, doors opening and stuff will help air out the rooms. But science rooms are never this large. So we're going to... I did some pretty extensive testing. And I'll explain some simple methods to somewhat more complicated methods of how to basically use your hyperlace as fast as possible. Also, before we even start, uh, I should probably just explain how to even make a machine just in case you're brand new to the game or you're new to science and have never made a machine before. So once you print your uh, machine board out, say you want to make a completely new machine, for whatever reason, say you just want to have a separate hyperconvection protolathe, that is no issue. You press G, you type in machine frame, 
and just observe what you need. All you need additional is you need a screwdriver and a wrench. That's all you need for uh, parts. Science can print these parts out immediately, so you can always have these available. You click Place Construction Ghost, click wherever you want it, and now you just need some steel. Left click. It will automatically be unanchored, so you must pull out a wrench and anchor it in place. Now you will go over and get your low voltage cables. You can always shift click if you don't know what step you're on. Now you insert any machine board, so we put in our hyperconvection. Now we need an igniter, two glass beakers, and two matter bins. So we can make our two beakers, and we need two matter bins. Again, you can make these straight up at a auto lathe round start. You will have these materials on every single station, so you could upgrade, you could make these machines immediately upon getting the research, as long as somebody else hasn't blown them all on round start. And then we need an igniter, which you can get igniters from. Robotech Deluxes have igniters in them, and every science department will have these. So again, you can just walk over to the robotics part of the science lab, put that in. And once you have inserted every part of whatever machine you're making, you just screwdriver it, and you're done. That's it. It is really easy to make machines from scratch. If you have something like a flat packer, it's even easier. You just put the board in and click pack. Uh, very, very simple. Now we're going to discuss the downsides of the hyperlace and how to mitigate these downsides so that you can spam out things with twice the efficiency. Hyperconvection machines will actually output a ton of heat if you craft with them rapidly. If you craft like one or two things at a time and like give the uh, open doors, give the room time to cool down just naturally through scrubbers, you will be able to mitigate the amount of heat uh, that is put out in the room, but without doing any form of modification, if you just craft a few items at a time, you can make a lethal amount of heat in a room. However, <laughs> this game has some pretty goofy insulated mechanics. So, all these people are naked except this person has winter boots on, science winter boots, this person has a science winter jacket on, this person has nothing. If we craft 10 large beakers, which don't take all that long to craft, but it does give the room like 10 or so seconds to heat up. We can just sit here with our gas analyzer on right over it. And we can watch the temperature of the room start shooting up pretty quickly. It's not technically the temperature of the room, it's the temperature of the tile and the heat's being output more heavily on this tile. You hit hundreds of degrees Celsius very instantly. You can hear the air alarm starting to whine. Now it's already red, meaning that it's a very dangerous environment and it's literally flickering between it. And all of the beakers are done crafting, so the amount of heat that will be output is done. But we have raised the temperature by 100 degrees Celsius just by doing some crafting. And without even using a health analyzer, we can analyze that the naked person is dying, but the other naked people with just a pair of boots or a jacket are fine to the heat. This person will completely die from heat damage, and the other two, will they warm up a little bit, but it doesn't get to a lethal amount. Uh, and you can see the jacket's even better insulating than just the boots of how much temperature their body's taking. But either way, these guys are totally fine. And what I don't know what I just did with the health analyzer. That was weird. But this person is about to crit just from crafting at a hyper convection lathe. So I guess wear your winter clothes when you're in the 150 degrees Celsius room. But you ideally don't want to let the room get this hot, and there's a few things we could do to mitigate that that are simple, and then I'll also explain some more complicated things you could do to mitigate the heat. Round start, science can easily make space heaters. You could also use freezers to supplement this, but space heaters don't require any form of Atmos access. It requires just turning on a button. So at the space heater, we just want to make sure it's anchored. We want to put the power level on high. And you could drop the thermostat down to accept like 10 degrees Celsius. I want to go much colder in case there's lizards or something. Uh, you really don't want them to freeze. And it just, you want the room to be comfortable even if it isn't mechanically going to hurt you or anything. So we just turn that on. And this will try to maintain that level of temperature in the room. Now, remember this that we were experiencing lethal amounts of heat. With just one space heater, which is really not all that expensive to make... Even without setting up a more advanced system, we're going to craft 10 more beakers, which was identical to the last test, and we're going to observe the temperature. The temperature will still get pretty high in this room, but it will cool off. It will stay cooler during the process, and it will cool off over time much faster. As long as you're not crafting a million items, this might be all you need to do. If you're only crafting a few items every minute or so, and not spamming out 10 things at a time like this, but if you're making, like, a full utility belt from a, a hyper lathe, you could produce quite a lot of heat. We can see that the heat is about actually as high as it was before, but this is directly on the lathe, and we can see that there is still damage being taken. 
So this is not a perfect solution, but the damage they're taking is not as high as it was before. And the room itself will actually be cooling off. Of course, if people have the insulation, they're totally fine. And we can see the room is about roughly 30 to 40 degrees cooler than it was before. But again, this isn't a perfect solution. But if you're only doing a minor amount of crafting, this might be as much effort as you're willing to do. If you're in a larger room, this could be more effective because it'll be less lethal, less quickly. But this person is still taking a lot of damage, so I do believe looking for a more permanent solution is still better than this. Uh, you can craft more than one space heater uh, to increase the cooling effect. I think doing two still makes them take damage, and then you start using a lot of power and you take a precious floor space. But this person is definitely not critting as fast as they were. The room is cooling down considerably faster, but we still have a lot of heat in here. And if you craft even more than this, it's going to be a problem. So for the sake of seeing better and being able to better explain this, I've transferred to the uh, artifact room on Omega Station, but we're still in science. I highly recommend you grab a T-Ray scanner, and you're going to need just a little bit of steel to do this. Now, before you actually put your hyperconvection lathe in a spot that you want it to stay in, uh, you want to leave the tile where it's going to go unoccupied. Also, you could do this anywhere, just make sure you have access to the waste network. If Atmos is doing this job, this will work fine. If they're not doing this job, this will st if they're not doing their job, this will still work, but it might not be as effective overall. I'm not entirely sure, but just assume Atmos knows how to turn on the waste. So this does require a little bit of Atmos knowledge, but you could technically just copy and paste this basically anywhere you want on any station. We're going to do a tiny little bit of renovation. We don't really have to do this, but again, I'm just doing this for visual clarity to make it as easy as possible. You just want to crowbar your way over to the waste pipe, just like so and crowbar the spot where we're going to be leaving the uh, lathe. Now you take your steel, you're going to make a passive vent, and you want the pipe to be connecting the direction you're going, so I want to loop it around this way. We are going to move this. You do not have to move this. I'm just moving this purely to make explaining it and teaching it better. You ideally don't want to mess up your uh, artifact room, but this isn't really messing it up. And now you just need to copy the pipes like this. You could do it again in any manner, but you just want a pipe connecting away from the uh, passive vent. You want a valve, a manual valve. Uh, fucking gravity has gone out. You could leave this on or off at this point, doesn't really matter. And then we're going to make a pump. Gas pump or volumetric pump works just fine here, doesn't really matter too much. And we're going to replace this pipe that connects to waste with one that could connect my pipe network and the waste network. So in this case, we're going to want just a T-section or T-junction or work just fine. So now we have connected this little passive vent to waste and we can just keep this pump on. What this pump does is it makes it so waste, we will be pumping into waste and not pulling from waste just due to how pumps work. So now we want to move the lathe just straight back on to the passive vent, re-wrench it back down, and we are good to go. So whenever you're going to craft, you have to be careful about this, because this, so I'll just turn on the valve. You'll see that you actually do begin to start spacing the room when you turn on this valve, so you need to be careful. And we will eventually start suffocating, but we need this in order to get the heat out of the room. So we could just turn off the valve for now, and once we turn off the valve, as long as distro set up, you'll see the room will repressurize rather quickly. This is how we just maintain our heat in the room. Smaller rooms, you might have an easier time with this. You can space more because less people will probably be running in and out of it. Either way, all you want to do is whenever you're crafting items, you make sure the valve is open just to keep the heat down. So um, I'm not even going to let the whole thing repressurize. It's really not a big deal. You can go down to 20 kPa before anyone starts taking damage. I think slimes take damage a little bit higher, but just be mindful of people. But anyways, you can let it drop a good bit and not worry too much. Because, I mean, you're mitigating the heat, and this is for that reason. So, before you start crafting something, turn on your valve. Make sure the pump is pumping the gas in the waste, and you can start crafting. And you just leave this valve open while you're crafting. The extra heat will actually increase the pressure of the room, so you don't have to worry about depressurizing anything. Uh, we will craft 10 beakers. We can see the heat is still pretty intense especially right where I'm standing. I mean, if we go to the other side of the room, it's not a problem. So for people working in the same room as you, if they're a few tiles away, they'll be just fine. Now we can see the pressure on the other side of the room is a little bit lower, but the extra heat does overall keep the room somewhat safe. Even while doing this without a space heater in this room, um, I am hot 
like I am taking a little bit of heat damage, but it's pretty minor. It will heal on its own. And again, this is crafting a whole lot at once. But we can see the overall temperature of the room is really not that bad. We are already down to just being too hot. We're not taking any damage. And you could just kind of keep letting this go while the room temperature evens out. Just keep an eye on the pressure. You really want a gas analyzer for this. So the temperature is back down to normal pretty much already just like that. You can still keep spacing it. There's still going to be a little bit of hot uh, air pockets. Just Atmos does very interesting things in this game. So you can just keep letting this space out. It's really fine. But if you want, could just close the valve and start letting the room repressure. Because it'll still, keep, it'll still keep pumping in room temperature distro air. And you're good to go. That's really it. You can set up even more complicated setups than this, but this is a lot of crafting at once. You basically do no damage to yourself. Just don't stand directly on the lathe. Or if you're going to, wear some winter shoes and you literally won't take any damage. Even if the room was five times hotter than what it is right now, you'd be just fine. Insulated clothing is really weird in this game in general. But yeah, the temperature is a little hot. You could just keep spacing it if you want. Throw on a space heater. Uh, plenty of things you could do. Another thing you could do, you could just set up a passive vent directly to space with this and just vent it out as well without using waste but using the waste network gives you more flexibility but if you were to use space you would uh, effectively cool the room and space the room quicker this pretty much explains how hyperlace work how to use them more effectively uh, don't be afraid of hooking up to waste the whole point of it is that it's a waste network this stuff is probably getting pumped in the space anyway but yeah this saves you a ton of materials makes you less reliant on salvage and cargo you're still going to need their help but you're going to need it about 50 percent less Anyways, thank you for watching.